Hello and welcome to a new episode of Game Creator Tips and Tricks. I'm really excited about this particular episode since we're going to cover both how to use the new behavior module as well as create a game. The first one will overview what behavior trees are and how they work. Disclaimer, you don't need to have any knowledge about AI but you should be comfortable working with Game Creator. The second half of this video will cover how to create a hide-and-seek game where an NPC wanders around the scene looking for you, and if he spots you, he'll add one point to the score counter. So without further ado, let's get hands-on! Behavior Trees You've probably heard of them. They were introduced in the first Halo game, since then they have grown in popularity. This is due to the amount of flexibility they offer, but most importantly, they are super easy to debug and spotting error comes really naturally. There are mainly three types of nodes. Tasks, which check for conditions and execute actions. Composites, which decide how its children are executed based on some parameters. And decorators, which modify the state of its children in order to change the flow of the tree. Each one of them can only be in one of the following states. Ready, when a node is in idle running when the node is being executed, success when a node has successfully finished, and failure when a node fails to complete or its conditions are not met. But enough with the theory, let's see a real example. Here we have a very simple tree. It basically checks if the nation can see the player. If so, it starts waving its hands. Otherwise, it just stands there. Let's take a closer look at the behavior graph. The first thing we notice is the entry node. There must always be a root node, which marks the entry point of a behavior graph. From the root node hangs a selector composite. The selector node executes its children from left to right but stops the execution if one of them returns success. For those who have some coding knowledge, a selector is similar to having an OR symbol between each child. Using a more natural language, this snippet could be read as if the agent can see the player, execute the first node otherwise execute the second one. It is worth noting that a behavior graph is only executed once, but by default the behavior component restarts the execution every time it finishes. You can also modify the interval in which the behavior graph is evaluated in case you have performance issues. Behavior trees are complex structures and it takes some time to get used to them, but fear not. We have carefully designed an example that is intuitive and easy to understand. We will cover the basics of behavior trees as well as some more advanced structures. Before we begin, let's set up our scene. We have a player in the middle as well as a maze-like geometry, baked using the navigation mesh system. Let's create a new character which will play hide and seek with us. We'll add a behavior component in order to control agency through the behavior graph. Because this character will make use of the sight sense, we'll also add the perception component. Now let's create a behavior graph object that will control the character. To do so, right click on the project panel and select create, game creator, behavior, behavior graph. Drag and drop the behavior graph object onto the behavior component and double click it to open the behavior window. First of all, we need an access point. Let's click on create and then root to create an entry node. When creating behaviors, it is a good idea to zoom out and view the problem as a whole. Then identify chunks of behavior that can be decoupled and split them into sub-behaviors. A hide and seek game has two phases, the counting phase and the seek phase. We'll focus on the latter first. As we saw in the previous example, we can use a selector composite to check if the invoker can see the player. Notice that we need to set the condition mode as allowed to complete. This option allows the action below to complete without being interrupted, even if the player gets out of sight during the execution. We want the agent to follow the player for a few seconds, Stop following the player and 
and show a message acknowledging he saw the player. The character should also increase its score points by one unit. To do so, we can make use of the blackboard. The blackboard is a list of items that we write down and work the same way as the local variables. For this case, we need to create a new entry in our blackboard. We name it score and we set its type as number. If we check the behavior component, we'll see that it has been updated and it shows our blackboard entry with a default value of 0. To increase the score, we'll use the add variable action. To access the blackboard entry, we set the variable type as a local variable and set the target as invoker. The invoker will always reference the object that has attached the behavior component. On the other side, if the character can see the player, we want it to follow a patrol route. We'll create a patrol logic outside of the behavior graph so we can reuse the behavior for multiple agents and give them different patrol routes. To do so, we create an action that calls an actions object fed by the blackboard. We'll name this entry as patrol. We'll create an entry in the blackboard panel and set the type as game object. If we go back to our scene and select the behavior component, we'll see we have a new entry called patrol. All we need to do is create an action that moves the invoker from marker to marker. We'll fast forward this process since it's as easy as creating markers around the scene and use the move character to action for each one of them. Let's drag and drop this actions object onto the patrol field. We can now hit play and we should be able to play hide and seek with the agent. We could stop here and call we have a minimum viable product of a game, but we can do much, much better. So if you want, bear with me and let's make magic. A hide and seek game is only fair if the seeker counts to at least 5 before starts searching for the player. Let's take a closer look at this statement. First count to 5, then search for the player. This sounds like a sequence composite. We'll create one and place it between the entry node and the selector. To remove a connection, right-click on any port or overwrite a connection, dropping in another one. We can now create a task on the left that will take care of the countdown. We'll keep the countdown very simple. Make a character enter a meditation state, Verbally count down to 5, and restore the state. Once this task finishes, it will jump to the one on the right. Time to test this out! If there is one thing I love about Bioware games, is their banter system. There's something magical hearing your party members make small talk about recent events. Inspired by it, we'll make our agent taunt you with random phrases every once in a while. We want to have a banter system working along the patrol task. We'll create a parallel composite as the parent of the patrol task so both the patrol and the banter are executed at the same time.
our behavior tree is starting to become too big for our taste. To solve this, we're going to create a new type of node called behavior graph. A behavior graph node allows to execute another behavior graph. This enables to keep behavior graphs organized and decoupled. Let's create another behavior graph asset and drag and drop it inside the node. To choose from a list of phrases, we'll use the random selector composite and create a bunch of tasks which will be randomly picked. Let's step back for a moment and think about the banter system. We want to add some time padding between phrases. We could add a wait action before each task, but that is not very practical. Instead, we can use a sequence composite as a parent of the random selector and create a task on the left which await action. This might look verbose, but will allow us to tweak the one single value instead of editing all wait actions inside each task. We have one small issue though. The wait time action, once it returns success, it won't be called again. We can force it to repeat itself by adding the repeat decorator as a parent of the sequence. A repeater decorator resets the state of all its children nodes once they have been completed. That's all, let's hit play and see the results. We hope you enjoyed the video and learned something from it. You can download Game Creator and the Behavior Model at the Unity Assets Store. You'll find the links down in the description. Cheers and happy game making!